What's going on guys, it's that time of year again, my first ratings review of NHL 25. It's actually a little bit different this year. If you guys go over to more, click rosters, you'll actually have to go over to the side here to go to edit player, edit lines, player movement, etc. Kept messing me up, I kept clicking edit, click on active roster, you guys can see there. Uh, the only one right now is December 19th. I'm actually using a custom roster, which is just basically all the latest contract extensions, also to uh, move some guy from free agency to NHL teams that have signed PTOs. But we're gonna go through here guys, and just give you my thoughts on all the ratings and potentials for all the NHL players, top prospects, etc. So starting off here, the guys with the Anaheim Ducks, you can see Mason McTavish is a highest rated player, A6 overall, high top six. I really do think he should be elite potential. I mean, he was third overall pick. You got Troy Terry there, 86, which makes sense. Ryan Strom, Cam Fowler. Mintikov, 84 after one season. I'm not so sure about 28 points. It's pretty solid, but I think 82, maybe 83. Trevor Zegers, 84 is probably a bit underrated, basically because he had a, you know, injured season last year. 15 points, 31 games. I think Zegers should be at least 85. For Toronto, there's not bad. Obviously, was an all-star last year, but a bit of a one-off. Leo Carlson, 83. Very good prospect, but I don't know about 83 overall with 29 points. I think that's why potential exists. You know, you don't always have to boost up young guys. They can just be high potential, similar to Cutter Gauthier there. Olin Zellweger, definitely Chevrolet lead potential as well. Um, look at the rest of these guys. I don't think, you know, it's too terrible. And again, guys like Kachuk, Lindstrom, I threw on the team because they did sign a PTO. Moving on here, guys, to the Boston Bruins. You got Passion right there at 95 overall again hard to argue i maybe would have like a 94 mcavoy 92 i do think is a top six defenseman in the league marshan there 89 i think it's a pretty solid rating for him lindholm carlo coil elias lindholm 85 i mean leaves vancouver all of a sudden pretty big downgrade he probably should be a bit better than that obviously last year only had what 45 points 44 points there he should be i think in 86 probably 87 that seems a bit uh, i don't know too drastic of a change for me Morgan Geeky in 83. He had 39 points last year. I don't know if that deserves an 83, especially what? He was like a 79, 80 year before. Matthew Potra probably could have higher potential than that, making the NHL already. Uh, look at the rest of these. They're not terrible. Andrew Peak probably should be a low 80, but uh, as we go through, you guys will see there are a lot kind of bad ratings, I would say, but overall they're fine. I think just across the board, ratings seem to be up for some reason. Uh, Darlene here's a 91, elite potential. Tange Thompson, Bowen Byram, 87. Uh, definitely, I like Bowen Byram, but I don't know what he did to get 87. He had 20 points, 85 games of the Avs, 9 points of the Sabres, 24 the year before and 42. 87 overall. Uh, <laughs> so it makes him as good as like Lindholm already, who's, who's obviously just had a much more accomplished career. I don't quite understand that one at all, especially with the elite potential. He's going to get like way too good, I think. At least have him like 84 max if you want to leave the elite potential. Owen Power there, 86. Honestly, might be a little bit high for him, even like 33 points. He's solid, but I don't know if he's that good yet. Cousins, I think that's good. I think Cousins actually could have higher potential, like high top six, maybe elite. JJ Paterka, Zucker, Quint. Quint could also have elite potential or, you know, high top six. Zach Benson there, we'll see. Elite potential for now, though, does make sense. Uh, Ryan McLeod, 81, I think, you know, not too bad. Probably make him like a high top nine, so medium top six. But again, we're probably pulling hairs. So looking through Jacob Bryson. Let's see, does he have good speed? Not bad, probably could be a little bit faster. There's certain guys, you know, that are supposed to be quick. Sometimes EA gets it right, sometimes they do not. Razzle Anderson here, best player on the Flames, followed by Mackenzie Weger, Kadri, Cooper Doe 85. Tough player to rate for sure. They still have with the third eye, tape to tape. Obviously, you know, two years ago, the dude was like a 94, I should say three years ago now, 115 points. Since then, he's been like a 50 point guy. 85 overall, it's probably fair. Maybe having like 86 max. Uh, Kuzmenko, though, tied with them. Last year, he had 46 points. The year before, 74. Never had 100 plus. See, I don't know. I think Huberdeau is definitely a better player than Kuzmenko. Sharon Govich as well, 85. Coming off a 59-point career year, whereas Huberdeau is having a down year at 55 points. That's where the ratings don't make a ton of sense. I think both those should be 84s. Huberdeau at least 86. Maybe even 87, depending how much you know you think he is like the new player that we're seeing. Blake Coleman, Backlund, Mantha, the 83. Maybe a tad high. Jake Bean, 83, I think is definitely high. Tyson Berry, 81 on a PTO. I feel like a lot of the guys on the PTOs probably should be like high 70s because a high 70 to me is kind of like a fringe NHL or maybe makes the team, maybe doesn't. A low 80, like you're probably guaranteed an NHL. You're probably not having to try out unless maybe Max Patch ready because he does have all those injury issues. But apart from that, that's not usually the case. So I don't know, some interesting Rams and guys like that. Hurricanes here, Aho, best player. Slavin, 89. I think Slavin could honestly even be a 90. Discipline, let's see. 90, that's good to see. Obviously, coming off that Lady Bing. You got Sveshikov there. Natchez, Jarvis. 
87. He had 67 points last year, which is quite solid. I don't know though, 87 for him already. I think that might be a tad high. Brent Burns looks good. Orlov, Sean Walker, obviously solid defensively. Goss is bare there. Again, both those guys probably could be like 83s. Jordan Stahl, I think, is fine. Same with Kokaniemi. Wouldn't have at high top six, though. I think low elite makes perfect sense for Kokaniemi, former third overall pick. Uh, the rest of these guys aren't too bad. Uh, just kind of quickly going through. Uh, Bradley Nadeau there now in the game. I'm not sure if he was in NHL 24 or not. Chicago Blackhawks here, guys. Connor Retard, 88 overall there with medium franchise potential. Dude's going to be an absolute beast in the sim. Of course, he's got that shock and awe zone ability. Make a snappy beauty backhand as well as the skilled up X Factor. Like I said, dude's going to be an absolute beast. Only 82 awareness. Dude is all offense for sure. So, yeah, looking at him, that shot is just ridiculous. Very curious to see how he does sim. I think for Bedard, 88 might be a little crazy coming off. I mean, 61 points, 68 games. It's almost a point per game. Honestly, I don't hate it. If you're going to overrate somebody, overrate a generational player like that. Uh, Seth Jones, that looks fine. Tara Vinen, last year, what do you have? Like 53, year before 37. I don't know about him being 86, higher than Huberdo. But when you look at the stats, Huberdo had the same amount of points last year. 20 more points the year before. Obviously, Tara Vinen missed some games. And then the year before that, he had 50 more points than him. And Tara Vinen's one overall higher. Uh, again, that's why Huberdo, he should be at least 86. Or Tara Vinen here should be like an 84. I like Hall at 85. I think that's fine. Same with Bertuzzi there. Kershev seems a bit high. Martinez, Mikaya, they're fine. Brody there, I think's good as well. Um, looking through, you know, I think Kevin Korczynski here. Elite potential I like. I like the rating too. Connor Murphy, probably a little bit underrated. Definitely a solid defensive defenseman. Could have higher defensive stats there. Alex Vlasic, definitely underrated. He had a really good season last year, even though the Blackhawks weren't great. Solid defensively, 6'6". Physical wise, I think you could upgrade that. You could definitely upgrade defense awareness as well. He should be like at least an 83, if not 84. That's why they paid him, you know, four and a half million dollars there. They're not doing that for a guy that's an 80 overall. Uh, the rest of these, I think, look not too bad. Carl Avalanche up next. Nathan can lead the way, 96 overall. I've already done one sim, and he absolutely dominated. We'll see if that continues. Kel McCarr, of course, always dominates in the sim. Both those guys with franchise. Miko Ranton, 93. I think that's fine. Honestly, Ranton maybe could even be a 94. Devin Taser, 89. Looks good to me. Middlestat and Shushkin, both 86s. Middle stat's probably a little bit high. Coming off 57 points, 59 the year before. To me, that's like an 85 overall guy if they're in the 50s. Nachushkin, 86. When he's healthy, that actually makes sense. Landis Gog's still on the team. Again, so hard to call with him because he hasn't played hockey in two years, but apparently he might be coming back this year, so you can't quite put him on LTIR yet. Girard there. Juran, 84. One good year uh, in the last, like, what, six years since uh, 2018, 2019. I don't know about that one. I think Duran should be like 82 or something. Again, I like to go with a three-year scale. It looks to me like EA is using a one-year scale, maybe a two-year scale, but uh, it's really tough to say because, again, a lot of like the players, when you look at the stats, um, it's not quite equal across the board. But uh, the rest of these aren't too bad. Lone O'Connor obviously just signed that big contract extension. He should have higher defense awareness. One of the better uh, defensive, you know, two-way wingers in the game. Next year, you guys got the Columbus Blue Jackets. Zach Renski leading the way, followed by Adam Fantilli. I think you could actually give him highly potential. If it wasn't for Bedard, he actually could have went first overall. I know Carlson, of course, went above him. Proveroff, Severson, fine. I probably would have him like 84s. Jenner, Johnson, 84, already seems high. Um, 16 points, 42 games. 40 points the year before, and we're an 84 overall. I like Ken Johnson a lot. 84 is way too high for him like he wouldn't be signing 1.8 times 3 if he's 84 a lot of times you got to kind of look at that contract to get an idea if your rating makes sense johnson should be like 82 max david jerichek as well um overrated here 84 he's played total 43 nhl games or i guess 47 he's got 10 points he's not amazingly defensively to make up for that lack of production he should be like 81 82 marchenko's okay monahan's okay you can maybe even make monahan 85 uh, I think JVR there, it's not too bad. Maybe have him 82, like it did take him a while uh, to get signed. Look at the rest of these guys. Jordan Harris there, honestly, maybe uh, give a slight bump to, but I think the rest of these do make sense. Dallas Stars here. Haskinen actually has franchise potential now. That is crazy. I'm not sure if I'd make his potential that high. I think Haskinen's a top, you know, six defenseman in the league. For me, it's like McCarr, Hughes, Fox, Haskinen, McAvoy, and Roman Yossi. I think of those six, McCarr and maybe Quinn Hughes are the only two I'd give Francis potential to. So again, I think this is a little bit high for the potential. I do like the rating though, 92. Robertson, 91, obviously had kind of a down year, 80 points after having 109 the year before. 91 is probably fine for him. Rupe Hans, 89 is actually good to see him getting respected. Thomas Harley, 87. 
He had an awesome year last year. I don't know if I'd make him an 87 already. First time playing a full season. He did have almost 50 points. 87. Like, this just tells me they're definitely basing it on, like 90% on what happened last year because that's a little high. I think uh, for me, he's like an 84, maybe 85. Now, why Johnston? He's got definitely a much more, you know, proven track record. 65 last year, 41 the year before. I don't mind 87 for Johnston. I'd probably make him 85, 86, but I give him elite potential. Uh, you got Duchesne there and Sagan, 86. Same with Ben. I think those are pretty fair. Lindell, Marchment, Stan Coven, 84, elite potential for him. Again, I don't know how Stan Coven gets elite potential. When he was a second round pick, compared to Johnson, who was a first round pick, and last year he had 14 points. Interesting uh, decisions, but uh, whatever. Yeah, I think Stan Coven, high top six makes more sense. He should swap potentials there with Johnston. Dumba, 84, probably should be like an 83. Uh, rest of these guys, I think like, you know, for the most part is fine. But again, there's just some head scratchers in these ratings for sure. Dylan Larkin, 89, I like that. Of course, you got the wheels X factor there. Um, playmaker, honestly, could make him a two-way forward. I didn't notice a lot of the player types could, you know, use some work. Lucas Raymond there, 88, has a new contract. Same with Cider. A lot of people said those two were kind of too high rated. I feel like at least they're an 87, so it's not too far off. Patrick Kane, 88, is probably too high at this point. Last year, he had 47 points, 50 games. So almost a point per game, but... You know, no defense at all. I think you look at his, like, stat attributes. Obviously, he's going to have crazy hands. His highest stats puck control, definitely, I think it should be deking. I think, for me, Patty Kane at this point would be, like, 86, maybe 87 max. Tarasenko, even 87. Probably an overall too high. Dabrinkit, I don't mind that. Petrie, Comfer, Gustafson, I think, you know, 84 for him. 31 points, all offensive defensemen. Like, he should be an 82. Uh, rest of these guys for the Red Wings look pretty good. Evanston 81, elite potential. I think that's pretty fair. Uh, Justin Holt and Sherratt, both pretty low. Sherratt should be at least one overall higher than Holt, though. Definitely played better for us last year. Bergerins makes sense. Next up, guys, McDavid, highest rated player in the game. Nice on overall, high franchise potential. He's 27 now, so he's done growing, so it actually doesn't matter too much. Obviously, had 100 assists last year, 98 passing. 100 assists doesn't even give you 99 passing. He actually doesn't have a single 99 stat. I'm not really sure what EA is so scared about with that. He's got 98 offense awareness. I think those are the only two 98s I see. Definitely, especially like the speed. He's got worse speed than acceleration and agility. Uh, he's literally the fastest player in the game. So it doesn't make a ton of sense to me. I feel like, I like the fact he's got 89D awareness. They got it out of the 90s, but bump his poise in 99, offense awareness, some of the other stats. And they can drop like defense awareness. Uh, definitely kind of interesting how they do it. Dry style there, you can see making 14 million on that extension. 95 overall. Zach Hyman, 89. Of course, uh, tons of like crease crasher, big tipper, X factors there after the 54 goal campaign. Evan Bouchard's an 89. Hard to argue with that. He was an absolute stud last year. Nudes there, great contract. Ekholm, 86. Maybe you can make him an 87, honestly. Uh, Jeff Skinner there, 86. I think if he's an 86, probably doesn't get bought out by the Buffalo Sabres. Nurse, 85, actually makes sense. He's a top four defenseman, but he's getting paid like a number one. Uh, Arvidsson there is not bad. Kane, not too, too bad. Let's see. Dermot there on a PTO. Again, probably should be like a 79, right? If he's maybe making an HL team. Same goes for Mike Hoffman. If there's guys on the team already signed, there's 79s. Like I said, they should be 79s max. Uh, Corey Perry, high elite, obviously. He's a veteran, so it doesn't really matter too much. Florida Panthers, defending Stanley Cup champs up next. You got Barkov there, 94. I think that's good. Kachuk, 92. He's got the franchise potential. Kachuk, definitely, you know, I could see as a franchise player. I think Barkov... Uh, obviously, he's done growing, but he'd be a high elite minimum. Sam Reinhardt here, speaking of the player types. Playmaker, after finishing second in goals last year with 57. I think you should make him a sniper. He had almost 60 goals. I don't know how they have this guy being a playmaker. Especially when it looks like the ratings are primarily based on last season. I don't know why they went, you know, based their player types on last season as well. As obviously, you could go back a couple years when Reinhardt had 50 assists with only 30 goals. But again, I'd like to see them, you know, kind of balance across the board. Either everything's based on last year or it's everything's based on the last few years. Doesn't really seem to be the case. Uh, Ekblad there, forcing both 87s. Forcelings definitely emerged as a very solid defenseman. Um, I think Ekblad even could be an 88. He just has like tons of injury issues. For Hagee, 87 is not bad. Bennett there, Lundell. Uh, Lundell could probably have higher potential as well. Let's see, Sam Bennett's Discipline, 75. Okay, <laughs> good to see that. Nate Schmidt, Boakvist, both 82s. Adam Boakvist does not have elite potential anymore. That is wrong. He's not signing for literally the league men. If he still has that high potential, that definitely needs to be dropped to a low elite because that is absolutely ridiculous. He's going to have way too much value, even with, you know, the lower rating at his age uh, than he should. Lesteran in there, Boakvist, Kulikov. But the rest of this isn't too, too bad. LA Kings up next. You got Kopitar, Doughty. I think they've been like their one and two for the past decade in terms of the ratings. Uh, Campe there, 87 overall. Good to see he's a sniper to know Byfield. 
Byfield, 55 points. I don't know if I'd make him an 86 quite yet. Probably like an 84, maybe 85. Again, he's a rookie. He's going to have lead potential. He's going to grow a ton. I think, you know, they're making these guys a little bit too high rated too soon. And then with the potential, they're going to get kind of crazy and franchise way too quick. Mikey Anderson there, 85. It's actually kind of nuts for like a more, you know, defensive defenseman. Maybe he's better than I think. I would have guessed like 83, 84, similar to Gavrikov. Fogel, 83 is fine. Kiliev there, 82, also not terrible. Look at the rest of these ratings. Clark, 80, medium elite. I don't think... Uh, they're too, too bad. I feel like Alex Turcotte definitely could have a lowly potential still. I really like that potential for anyone that's like a former, you know, top 10 picks. It's the potential that doesn't really seem to get used too much. Minnesota Wild up next. Caprizo there, 93. Brodeen, highest rated defenseman, 89. Above Faber. I like Brodeen a lot. I think Brock Faber was far and away their best defenseman last year. So I think, you know, Brodeen, maybe make him 88 and Faber in 89. Like Faber, honestly, was that good. Uh, Boldy, 87. He could probably be higher. Like the dude had... 70 points, kind of does it all for them. It's their second best forward by far behind Kaprizov, Spurgeon 87. So they have a really solid like, top three defenseman. Zuccarello still looks good at his older age. Eric Sinek, honestly, maybe could bump him up one. I think he's very underrated. Hartman, that's fine. Middleton. Uh, Ross, elite potential still at 23. I don't know about that one. I'd probably make him like a uh, medium top six. Looking at the rest of these guys. Again, Freddie Goudreau there, going to be funny in franchise. 81 overall fourth liner with a no trade clause. I think other than that, though, like these look pretty decent. Next up, guys, we have the Montreal Canadiens. Nick Suzuki, 89. I remember getting a lot of hate a few years ago when I said he should have high top six instead of elite. I will say right now, I don't think Suzuki deserved 89 overall. 77 points, less than a point per game. I think when you look at the NHL and how high scoring is, you need to be putting up a point per game or more to be, I think, an 89 overall. Like Caulfield there, even 88. I like Caulfield a lot. He's got the same name as me. 65 points. When you look at the rest of the offensive forward, it seems like mid-50s gives you an 85. Like, like that's a pretty good barometer to look at. Confield there at 65 makes me think he should be an 86, maybe 87. How he's an 88, especially with like such low physical stats and defense. I'm not quite sure. Um, like he could be an 86, but actually better offensive than EA has him. So I think both those guys are a little bit too high rated. Matheson, of course, I know has been playing really well for Montreal. So I don't mind the 87. Doc 85. Line 85. I actually think it's pretty fair, maybe even like 86. As until last year, he was basically injured the whole way. He was a point per game with Columbus. So if he had played a full season, he would have been like 82 points. I think Line could have been, you know, 87 probably. But give him like lowly potential. Savkowski here, not too bad. But again, being a rookie, 150 point season, I probably make him 84. That way he just kind of has more room to grow in franchise. Gooley, new hook. I think those are pretty good. Lane Hudson, 82. I like Lane Hudson. I don't know if he's proven to be an 82 with two games played. I'd probably make him like a 79, especially because they're not really sure how much, you know, ice time he's going to get this year. But of course, I would leave that elite potential on him. Um, other than that, I think most of these guys are pretty fair. Dvorak may be a little bit low rated there, 80. And now next year, guys, we have the big spenders this summer in National Predators. Roman Yossi, 93 overall. I will say in terms of the player type, two-way defenseman for him. He's definitely an offensive defenseman. Like... Come on, the dude put up 85, 59, 96. He's decent defensively, but this dude's an offensive defenseman. You got Stammer there as a playmaker. I think Stammer should be a sniper. I know he's got like, you know, 50 assists, 64 assists, but he's also had 40 goals two of the last three years. One timer is his own ability. Make Stammer a sniper. Forsberg there, 90 overall. Obviously a great season for him. Shea, 87. I don't know about that. I think some of these defensemen are kind of too high rated. I would have Shea probably like 86. March or so, I don't think that's too bad. Another guy, though, he's a sniper. 42 goals, 27 assists last year. I think rating's not too bad. Maybe 86, same with Nykvist. Make him a sniper. Ryan O'Reilly doesn't look too bad. Thomas Novak, he's coming off 45 points. They made him an 84. I think that's pretty fair. Uh, Carrier, Fabro, Luke Shen, Evangelista. The rest of these are actually, like, not too, too terrible. Jack Hughes here, 90 overall, highly potential. It's probably a tad high. I'd probably have him at, like, a 93, and I think that's pretty fair. When you look at his stats, like, he had 74 last year and 62, 99 the year before that. Pretty similar stat line to Jason Robertson, who's a 91. Obviously, I do think Jack Hughes is better, but, yeah, 94 might be a bit much. Brat there, his year aren't bad. Hamilton, I think, actually should be higher rated. He was a 90, 90 until 24, and then he played 20 games last year. It was almost a point per game, and he dropped in ratings, so interesting decision and I definitely think like Hamilton's more than one overall better than Brady Shea. Brett Pesci here 88 overall definitely overrated I think he should be like 85 86 solid defensively but 88 like that's borderline number one defenseman. Pesci is just not. Uh, Meyer there 87 is not bad. Luke Hughes another young guy I think overrated make him like 83 maybe 84 but still of course leave the potential. Rest of these guys Simon Nemetz does he does he deserve an 84 20 points 60 games like 
You're saying he's already a bona fide top four defenseman. I think a lot of these rookies are just way too high rated too soon. Now, maybe it's because I'm looking at it from a franchise perspective where I know these guys are going to grow a ton. Whereas when you're just using them in play now or whatever, it doesn't matter as much. But I don't know. I still think what I'm saying makes sense. Even play now, I think, you know, they're too high rated. Islanders here, Barzell, Dobson, not too bad. Adam Pellick here, of course, should still be good defensively, which actually, yeah, he is quite good. Horvat, Polak, Nelson. Honestly, Nelson, I think he's one of the more underrated players in the league. Last year, he had 69 points. He gets 30 goals the last three, three straight years. He plays decent defense. I think he should be at least an 86, maybe 87. Like, he actually just does it all. Another really underrated guy. Uh, Anthony Duclair there. Lee, Romanov, Palmieri. Looking at the rest of the Islanders here. I think these make sense. Matt Martin, again, another, you know, PTO player. Next up, guys, we have the New York Rangers. Panarin, 95. I think, like Pasternak, I'd probably go 94. One of the main reasons, honestly, is just because I feel like Panarin's not, you know, one overall away from McKinnon and two away from McDavid. I think should be more separation. Adam Fox, they're also a franchise potential. I don't hate that. Adam Fox is super good. I mentioned McCarr. I mentioned Hughes. Fox, you probably could give franchise to as well, especially only one year left. 92 overall. I actually think you make him a 93, maybe 94. Like, he's honestly so, so good. Uh, Zibanejad, Kreider, Trocek. These all make sense. Miller, Lafreniere, of course, definitely deserves that elite potential again. Truba, Hiddle, Lindgren. I'm curious to see. Uh, Will Cooley got a nice upgrade there, 82. Definitely, like, he's already playing top nine. Make him, like, a high top nine, if not medium top six. Capocacco, low lead. Okay, so good to see them using it on somebody. Uh, Matthew Rempe here, grinder. Uh, cool to see him kind of, you know, getting a bit of a boost. Ottawa Center's up next. Brady Kachuk there. Timmy Stutzla, the high lead potential. Giroux, Sanderson, 86. I don't hate it. Shabbat, also 86. Looking at it on its own, I don't think that's that bad. But then you got to remember, Bowen Byram's an 87. Thomas Shabbat, I think, uh, better defense than Bowen Byram. One for one right now. Josh Norris, Drake Batherson. Batherson, honestly... Probably should be an 86. Like, yeah, last year he had 66 points. Year before, 62. An 85, guys, like a mid-50s. I think Batson's definitely underrated there. Perron, 84 is fine. Same with Zub, Pinto, Bernard Docker, Ridley Gray. Um, Jensen maybe could probably be an overall or two higher. He doesn't get traded for Chikrin if he's honestly that much worse than him. Looking at the rest of these, I don't think they're too terrible. Ostup check probably could uh, boost his potential a little bit. Next year, guys, have the Philadelphia Flyers. Travis Konecki there, 87. That big extension. Owen Tippett, last year he had 53, year before that 49. He should be an 85. Like that's kind of the base we're using. You got Sandheim, Farabee, Couturier is probably fair at this point. Frost, Cam York, Jamie Drysdale there, Law and Brink. There you have it, guys. Wait to see this one. Matthew Mutual is actually in the game day one. How cool is that? They've got him at 82 overall there, highly potential. They got him as a playmaker, so it's almost perfect. I think Michkov, 82, high elite sniper would have been perfect, especially since, like, you know, he's supposed to be more similar to Bedard than Fantilli, which actually, speaking of that, so Bedard's 88. What is Fantilli? Because those are kind of the guys that they were all, you know, talking about together in that draft. Fantilli's 85, so Michkov might be underrated here. I don't really hate it because he hasn't played an NHL game yet, so, again, they can always boost him up. I honestly might make Michkov like 83, 84 though. And again, I don't know how the guy that was getting compared to Alex Ovechkin isn't a sniper. When you look at his stats over in the KHL, like he's putting up, you know, as many goals as assists. This is one where I feel like they just had to do a little bit more homework. You got Zumala there, I think, with a new headshot. A lot of guys actually uh, should have those. Ryan Paling, one of the fastest players in the NHL. And he's got 85 speed and XL. So uh, yeah, they're still messing up some things here, unfortunately. It's stuff that they've literally fixed. Like uh, they fixed Paling's speed last year. I think I mentioned it to them and then... Uh, this year, they just revert back to, you know, making him slow. Pittsburgh Penguins up next. Crosby, 94. I don't hate that. Maybe Crosby could have, like, a 93. But, but for being the best player of the past 20 years, I don't mind that. Especially when he's still, you know, putting up over a point per game, as he always does. Malkin and Carlson, both 88. Latang, Rust. I mean, look at the rest of these guys. I don't hate these Penguins ratings. Uh, Drew O'Connor there, a little bit of a bump, 82. Uh, Graves. I'm trying to think. Like, these actually make a good amount of sense. Cody Glass. Maybe you could make a low elite if you wanted to. But yeah, these aren't too bad for the Penguins. San Jose Sharks up next. The Foley's actually their best player. Granlin, Couture. Couture is definitely a weird one. Missed all of last year. Or basically, he played six games. Year before that, 67. 85 is probably fair for him. Ferraro there. Wallman. Eklund's elite. You got Wenberg, Zetterlin, CC, Celebrini, if you guys missed it. 82 overall elite potential. First overall pick, I would definitely give him high elite. I think uh, when you look at some of the other guys with high elite... Celebrini is definitely on par with them. And now looking through the rest of the lines, they've actually got Will Smith already added to the game as well. I love that number two there for the center. 81, medium elite. So very cool to see. Playmaker there. I've heard he's actually got pretty good defensive games. So playmaker or two-way forward. Uh, either or would be good with me. 
Vlasic there. Looking through these. I, I think the rest of the Sharks ratings don't look too bad. Seattle Kraken up next. You got Brandon Montour there. He's another guy who definitely make an offensive defenseman. Two years removed from like almost a point per game. Last year, he only had 33. I'm curious to see on Seattle how he'll do. I feel like he might honestly revert back to his old self, which hopefully for them, not the case. They just paid him seven by seven. Uh, done there, McCann. McCann should be a sniper. 30 goals last year, basically 40 the year before that. You got Everly there, Bjorkstrand. Uh, let's see, Tolvanen, elite potential. Uh, I thought they fixed that. I swear last year he was like medium top six. I remember like NHL, what, 2021, he was still in the HL, elite potential. <laughs> this one doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's see the rest here. Not that it matters, but Stevenson's definitely better than medium top nine. Uh, Matty Beniers potential and ratings, pretty good. Obviously coming off a bit of a down year, 37 points. They're hoping he bounces back. Another big payday for him. Let's see Shane Wright. He's got lead potential, 79 overall. See, that actually makes, you know, a lot of sense there for a player like him. St. Louis Blues up next. Robert Thomas, low elite. This has to be, I think this has to be a bug. It happens sometimes. I remember like Cal Connor, I think it happened to you before. He's definitely a medium elite player. 88 overall for him. I honestly think he could be like an 89, like 86 points last year, 60 assists. Also, too, they definitely messed up his player type. He's a playmaker. Like, the two had 60 assists. I think I mentioned before, I literally was talking to Robert Thomas himself. He says he's one of the slower players on his team, and they still have him with the wheels X-Factor. So, they need to fix him. They need to make him a playmaker and get rid of the wheels X-Factor. Instead, like, you know, increase his passing while lowering his speed. But it is what it is. Jordan Cairo here, of course, also has wheels. He is a very, you know, fast player there. Uh, could honestly even be faster than they had him. Which Neighbors can honestly maybe even be like one higher. Jake Neighbors there, I don't mind the rating. Potential definitely should be medium top six. Uh, they actually got the Joseph brothers here, both 83s. Pierre-Olivier Joseph, I don't know what he did to deserve an 83. 11 points, 52 games in the NHL last year. I don't know, 83 for me, that's like a low-end top four defenseman. I don't think he deserves that yet. I feel like he should be an 81 max. Uh, Matthew Joseph, 83. Probably okay, maybe even 82, but yeah, the Pierre Olivier Joseph one, I don't quite understand. Uh, the rest of these ratings here, I don't think are too, too bad. Um, obviously, the two offshoot guys, Broberg and Holloway, only 80s. Good potential, though. We'll see if those, you know, contracts kind of come to bite them in franchise. I actually had them as one of the, you know, teams we could have picked for the franchise mode. Kucherov here, 95. I feel like if McKinnon's a 96, I wouldn't mind giving Kucherov 96 as well. I know, you know, he's a winger, not a center, but he's been an absolute stud for the last, you know, few years. Like 144, 113. 128 these two years I actually you know missed a bunch of time like i don't know kucherov for me 96 overall i wouldn't hate it also we get 100 assists i'd probably give him 98 passing just like mcdavid although i think i give mcdavid 99 passing i said so not too bad but yeah i think he's honestly one tier above you know your panarins your pasternax headman here 92 i think headman's too high rated at this point i feel like he should probably be an 89 no longer that 90 plus also i think he'd be offensive defenseman braden point there as a playmaker 46 goals this year, 51 the year before that. Looks like a sniper to me. After that, you got Jake Gensel. Hagel, I think, is one of the most underrated players in the league. A7 overall is actually pretty respectful for what he's done. You got McDonough back in the team there. Chernick, Sorelli, Darren Radish, 84. He actually had better production than I thought last year. I don't think he's an 84 overall defenseman, though. I think 82 would have been more than fair. JJ Moser now on the team. So yeah, Perbix tied with Radish. I think that would make more sense. Uh, the rest of these, like the Laredo guys, they're fine. Toronto Maple Leafs up next. You got Austin Matthews there at 95 overall. I feel like that's good for him. Now, one thing I got to point out, I noticed it before. He led the league in block shots or forwards two years ago. Last year, he was second in block shots and they gave him 82 shot blocking. So he should have like the best or second best shot blocking for any forward in the game. And I'm sure if we go through, yeah, John Tavares already on his team, 83 shot blocking, it's higher. So again, I think it's just those small attention to detail that honestly really matter with the ratings. They just make it so much more authentic, especially for the kids that, you know, maybe get their idea of players from this game. I know that was me back in the day, like NHL 2003, 2004, I learned, you know, who were the good players on these, you know, West Coast teams I barely ever saw play. If the ratings aren't accurate, you're gonna have kids thinking, I mean, obviously the shot blocking is not a big deal, but for some of these, you're gonna have kids thinking certain players are way better than they are, or certain players are way worse than they are, which is why you want to have you know the accurate ratings. Uh, Nylander, Marner here, both 91s. I personally think Marner's a better player. I'm sure Toronto fans would definitely debate that. I personally would have probably Marner 92 with Nylander being a 91. Uh, both playmakers there. Riley 88. It's probably a little high for him. I think like 87. Tavares, I think that's fair. Domi probably should be an 84. Liljegren probably should be an 83. Tan of 84 though is fine. Ekman Larson should probably be like an 82. Uh, Nye's 84, again, 35 point campaign last year. I don't know, I think that to me is like an 82, 83, especially for a young player. Pacioretty here, 82, is probably just like a tad high. If he's 81, I think that's fair, because if he's healthy, he's gonna score you some goals. 
Uh, the rest of these ratings aren't too, too bad. Next up here, guys, are the Utah Hockey Club. So kind of cool to see that logo in the game. Uh, Clayton Keller, their 89, I think it's actually quite fair. Search of 88, don't hate. Schmaltz there, Dursey, not too bad of ratings. Logan Cooley, I think, is a bit high after like one season where he had 44 points. I'd probably make him like 84. Uh, you have a Chelly there, Bukestad, Marino. I actually think Marino could be like an 85. Uh, Dylan Gunther here, 84, of course, just got that big contract. I think I had to add that one to the game. Uh, Kraus, Kerfoot. Looking at the rest of these, they're not too bad. Kessel Ring, I think they actually fixed his rating. Barrett Hayden here should be actually be higher rated. 81's a bit too low. Obviously, last year he had 10 points, 33 games, but like he plays first line center for them. That's why he had you know 43 the year before that. I'd make him like 82, 83. And he's actually pretty good defensively, so make him medium top six and give him a little bit of a defensive boost. Uh, the rest of these guys, Josh Dome, 79. Dude is almost a point per game in his 11 NHL games. I mean. I don't know. He looked at Simon Demetz. He had 20 games, 84. Josh Doan probably should be higher based on just what the rest of the rookies are rated. Uh, next up here, guys, the Canucks. Quinn Hughes, 94. Franchise potential. I think 94 is not bad for Quinn. If McCarr's a 95, Quinn being 94, it's tough to, you know, debate that. I also don't mind the franchise potential. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm just thinking about it right now. I so, so wish he was a Red Wing. Like, him and Sider, top pair. That'd be the best top pair in hockey, I think. Uh, you got JT Miller next, 92. So, I don't think Miller's a better player than Petey. I know Miller had more points last year. He had 103, whereas Petey only had 89. But the year before, he had 102. I think Petey, like, most people consider him the better player. I think those two should be swapped. Uh, Heronic, 87. It's fine, I guess. Maybe, like, 86. Besser, obviously, big bounce back year. Garland, DeBrusque. I mean, Garland probably could be, like, an 84, I think. Uh, you got Myers, 84. He got a boost in rating. I mean, dude probably should be 82, maybe 83. Daniel Sprong here is a very good fourth liner. You can put up points in limited ice time, but 84 is like a low-end second liner. 43 points, 76 games. I think he would be like an 82 in my, you know, rating system. Uh, looking at the rest of these, I don't think they're too, too bad. Uh, DeHarnay here I love. On the Oilers, he was like a 72 last year. Now at the Canucks, he's an 80, a big plus eight boost. Vegas Gold Knights up next. You got Jack Eichel there, 91. I think Eichel probably should be like a 90. Petrangelo, Stone, 89 each. I think Stone, when healthy, definitely 90 overall player. Should have, you know, some of the best defensive stats for a forward, which he does. Five stars there. Um, after that, you got Shea Theodore, should definitely be an offensive defenseman. Last year, he was almost a point per game. Dude's mostly offense, so another guy, player type, could be fixed. Thomas Hurdle will probably make a power forward. Carlson there, Hannafin. I think most of these ratings aren't too bad. I'm trying to see if there's anything that sticks out to me. Alexander Holtz, 82. Uh, 28 points, first time playing a full NHL season. I guess you can make him 82. It does seem, you know, a bit high, but uh, the rest of these, you know, aren't really too, too bad. Washington Capitals here, guys. John Carlson, their best player, 89 overall. Ovi next, 89. I honestly probably would have Ovi, like, an overall below that. Maybe make him, like, an 88, even 87. Still have him with amazing shots. He definitely deserves that, but I'd probably just lower, like, the defensive stats, the skating. Um, honestly, maybe even, like, some of the physical stats, because he doesn't really hit as much anymore. Strom there, not bad. Chikrin. Honestly, I'd probably lower him from an 86. When he gets traded, like, almost one for one for Jensen, 86 for an 81 defenseman. Clearly, Jensen should be a bit higher, like I said, 83. Chikrin probably a little bit lower, like an 85. Um, after that, you got Fairberry, Roy, Wilson. These don't look too bad. Dubois, 83. And he's coming off a tough year. Year before that, though, almost a point per game in Winnipeg, like two 60 point campaigns, 40 last year. So, see if on a three year scale, if that's like 86, 86, 84. Probably should be at least an 85. I'd also probably have him with like high top six. Manji Panny there. Ethan Bear, 83. It's way too high. Four points uh, last year. The year before that, he had 16. I don't think he's super good defensively. I don't know how he gets an 83. I think uh, for me, he should be like an 81. Uh, Sandine Milano, 83s is fine. Uh, the rest of these guys, you know, not too bad. They're more like bomb pairing guys. Backs from their LTIR. Winnipeg Jets, guys, the final NHL team. Kyle Connor here, 91 overall. Um, let's see. Last year, almost a point per game. Point per game the year before that. I don't know. I'd probably make Connor like a 90, slightly lower. Morrissey's fine. Shifley. Ehlers maybe like an 87. Perfetti. I like Perfetti a lot. He's not 85 overall. Uh, last year, he had 38 points. The year before that, he had 30. He's like an 84, maybe even 83. Way too high rated. Like, Flaherty's a better player. Same rating. Pionk, 85. Probably fine. Maybe 84. Looking at the rest of the guys here. I don't think these are too bad. IFL is pretty good defensively. Definitely, I think, could yeah, get a bump there in terms of his actual stats. Um, the rest of these, yeah, don't look too bad. So, next year, you guys, take a look at all the goalie ratings. Connor Hellebuck is the highest rated goalie in the game at 93. 
I don't think I mind his rating at 93. I just think that Shesterkin should be the best goalie. So if Hellebuck's a 93, Shesterkin, they should have made a 94. It is interesting to me how like much lower the goalies are rated. I don't know if there's a reason for that. Uh, Ducks there, Gibson 85, Dostal 80. I don't mind it, but Dostal definitely should have medium starter potential, if not like low elite. Boston there, swimming 89. You could make him, I think, a 90. You could probably also bump his potential to high elite. Like he's actually one of the best goalies in the game. Like there's reasons he's trying to get paid here. Uh, Lucan and Levi. I think uh, is actually pretty good. Reimer maybe a little bit lower. Uh, these don't look too bad. Vladosh and Wolf both 81s. Anderson, Kochikov. I think Kochikov is very good. Um, so I don't mind those either. Mrazek probably should be like one overall lower. Um, Avalanche, that looks fine. Blue Jackets. Merz Lincolns, you could probably honestly drop by one more. Hasn't really had great numbers. Andre 90 overall, high elite. So that looks good. DeSmith, I don't know if he'd be an 83 backup. Probably like 81, 82. Huso, he kind of missed all the last year, so it's really tough to grade him. Talbot, though, I mean, was pretty solid. Lion, you know, not bad. I feel like the Red Wing goalie ratings aren't terrible. Oilers here, you got Skinner, 86. Pickard, 80. I think those are decent as well. Uh, Bobrovsky, back to me to 90. Obviously, big reason why Panthers won the Stanley Cup. Knight there, 82 elite. Then you got Drieger, 82. He's been in the HL for most of the past two years. I know he had some injuries and stuff, but I don't know. He probably should be like an 80 max. Uh, Kemper, 82. Wow, obviously Lindgren kind of beat him out last year, but if you do like a three-year scale, 908, 921, I don't know. That seems really low for Kemper. I'd probably have him like an 83, maybe 84. Uh, the other two are fine. Minnesota Wild, Flurry, Gustafson, both tied. I feel like Gustafson at this point is probably slightly better, so maybe you drop Flurry to like 83. Uh, Montreal, Montembo there, 80. Kadeem Primo, 80. I don't think that's too bad. Of course, Price, LTIR. Uh, you got Saros here at 89. I think UC Saros is a top five goal in the game. I think he should be a 91 overall, highly potential. I know he's 29, so it doesn't matter. But still, just for that respect, um, for some reason, they always underrate him. I'm not sure if it's because he's 5'11". I don't know if it's because he plays for Nashville, but he should be a 90 plus goalie for sure. Uh, Markstrom, 87, not bad. Allen there. Devils definitely should be a force this year after fixing that goalie situation, bringing in two new guys, two veterans that you know you can rely on. Sorokin 90, Varlamov 85. I think that's pretty fair. Sorokin maybe even make a 91. Uh, Shosturkin again, I would have him, if Hellebuck's a 93, I would have him a 94. So I think he should at least be a 93 there. Um, center's up next, Allmark 89. I personally think Swayman's better. So again, Allmark 89, I don't hate, but then you have to make Swayman a 90. And then Forsberg's rating there, I think is decent. Flyers here, Urson 83. I don't know about that. He didn't have the greatest numbers last year. I think he should be like 82, Fedotov 81. Curious to see Fedotov in game, 6-7. Uh, honestly, if he's in HUD at all, he could be a beast for that. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Penguins, Jari, Nedeljevic. Pretty decent, probably Jari, maybe 85. Blackwood, Vanacek, 82s. I guess that's fine. You got Skarov, of course, coming up. I think he's on the AHL team right now. Uh, Decord, 84, Grubauer, 83. I could leave Decord, 84, Grubauer, I'd have like 82 max. Uh, Bennington there, probably like an 85 at this point. Hofer also can make like high starter potential. Vasilevsky, I think 92 is pretty fair. Johansson 80, he actually stepped in, played decent for him when Vasilevsky was out. Also too, I definitely give him like 99 poise if EA ever did give out the attributes because Vasilevsky is always, you know, so good in the playoffs. Uh, Toronto here, Joseph Wool, Stolers, Matt Murray. I think those are pretty fair. Ingram and Vamelka here, not terrible stats. Might drop Ingram by like one. Canucks, Demko, I think he's a good goalie. I don't think he's top five, though. I don't think he's better than Saros, who's 89. I'd probably have Demko at, like, 89, so basically swap, you know, him and Saros ratings there. Vegas Golden Knights, Hill, 86. I think he's more of, like, an 85 guy. I will say one really good thing to see, Robin Leonard finally on LTIR in this game. I'm not sure why it took them so long. Like, he hasn't played since the 21-22 season. Uh, I guess they just thought maybe he was going to come back. Uh, Lindgren, Thompson, both 84s. And then, like I said, Winnipeg Jets already saw Hellbuck there, 93. Cack in 82, probably a little bit high. I know he was on the Sharks, but I don't know. It seems like 82 is like the default for a backup goalie, which which I feel is a little bit high. I feel like the default for backup goalie should be an 80 if they're not, you know, too proven. So after that, guys, I guess we'll just take a look at all the kind of top prospects, see how they did um, for potentials, things like that. So you got Atu Ratu there, a little elite. Matt Savoy's actually dropped to medium top six. I guess they thought the trade was too lopsided otherwise. Centers there, you got Borgo, Wallstrom on the Islanders. Taking a look here at Calgary, you got Matt Coronado now with a game face. Pelche there, Poirier, Maximovic as well, and now with a game face. On Grand Rapids, Marco Casper has a new headshot, which is cool to see. Also elite potential now. I think before they had him at high top six. Looking at Laval here, you can see Heineman, Farrell, Kidney, I think, all new headshots as well. I will say, I just noticed Owen Beck here, medium top nine, 
for a early second round pick who was very good in juniors. I don't know about this one. He should definitely be medium top six. On Manitoba, you got Brad Lambert, Chaz Lucius. For some reason, Winnipeg always trades Lucius in franchise. We'll see if you know that holds true this year. And like I was saying, guys, on Milwaukee here, Joachim Kamel, 74, medium elite. He was a 17th pick, 2022. I don't know how he's elite potential. I think uh, medium top six, maybe high top six, more than fair. Uh, Tomasino as well is actually an 80 down there. You got Sveshkov. On Rockford, you got Frank Nazer, 79, medium top six. I know made his NHL debut last year. I was hoping for a headshot. Unfortunately, he did not get one. And now we handled it on the Sharks as a headshot. I don't think he had one last year, if I'm wrong about that. Uh, I apologize. Toronto Marley's, you guys can see Fraser Minton's rating. I think he should be like a 77. Alex Nylander there at an 80. Tough to grade because he actually did play, you know, pretty well there for Columbus in that short stint. 15 points, 23 games. And I almost forgot, guys, as you can see, Askarov now has a headshot in this game. 82 overall, their elite potential. They currently have on the AHL team. He got traded because he wants to play in the NHL. So I think he'll definitely be, you know, beating out Blackwood or Vanacek for some of those starts. 82 overall for him. Was really good in the AHL. Would you give him an 82 overall already with like pretty much nothing proven in the NHL? I don't think so. You probably have him like an 80 right on, but uh, definitely I would give him that elite potential. So we'll go through all the junior leagues here again, just looking at kind of the top players. Roger McQueen, elite potential. Same with Jacobson. I remember last year they had him like medium top six, made no sense. Charlie Ellick there, medium top four. Yakimachuk, medium elite. So this is probably just based on where Ottawa drafted him. I don't know about that. Everyone thought it was a reach. I think for me, he should probably still be a medium top four. Uh, Joey Ginla there, elite potential. I'm honestly not sure. He's not getting drafted until 2026, so um, that's probably fine because there's only going to be so many real players in that draft anyways. And speaking of the later drafts, you got Landon DuPont, franchise potential. This is cool to see. So he'll probably be the top pick in 2027. Usually EA is kind of like scared to give prospects franchise potential. I love this, um, especially since like he'll probably be the only real player in your 2027 draft, or I guess him and Jacobson. So knowing you have this guy to tank for in 2027, a franchise defenseman, I think is actually super cool. Um, after that, Nothing really too crazy there on cam loops. Tidja getting like bumped up to elite potential. Uh, and Crystal there, medium top six. I think definitely was a steal by the Capitals game in the second round. Now, speaking of franchise potential players, Gavin McKenna, who's supposed to go first overall 2026. Also medium franchise. He's supposed to be nasty, like similar to Bedard. Uh, so if you could get like him 2026, DuPont 2027, your franchise team would definitely be set. You guys can see, of course, Kay Lindstrom's rating potential. I think 77 is probably a tad high. I don't think he has like any chance to make the Blue Jackets. So... I'd probably have him like a 74 or something. Also, you guys can see Jager Fergus here on Moose Jaw with Lakovic. Brayden Jaeger, of course, uh, rights now owned by Winnipeg. Matichuk, 75, medium top four. Probably a little bit too high rated. Danielson, 73. I think he should be like a high top six. We took him ninth overall. So, uh, two behind Yakimchuk, who got a lead. Prince Albert, you got Dragosevic there. Offensive defenseman now. That is good to see. Praskak here was a first round pick. So, it looks like they bumped his rating and potential. Red Deer, you got Kalen Lynn, medium top six. Regina Tanner Howe is now a medium top nine. Last year they had him elite potential, so uh, definitely they give him a drop for sure. Seuss Dallov there, Melendike, those look good. Seattle, really nobody too much. On Spokane here, you got Berkeley Catton, 71, medium elite. I think that makes sense. Eighth overall pick, of course, by the Seattle Kraken. You got Connor Geeky there, Pickering, Tri-City, Jordan Gavin. I, for some reason, I uh, thought he was elite potential in my franchise mode. Uh, Schmidt, Hanzik, both uh, in the medium top six potentials. Cole Reshny here, they have medium top six. This Verhoff guy, medium top four. And I'll look at the OHL here, guys, on the Barry Colts. You got Hemming, Bodwin, medium top sixes. Bo Aki, medium top four. Same with Aitchison. Porter Martone here, medium potential. He's going to go top five in this year's draft. He could go as high as top three. So uh, good to see they actually made him a power forward now. I think before they had him like playmaker, a sniper, also to uh, boost in rating, now 76. Rep Cup there as well, medium top six. Luke Misa, of course, taken by the Flames. I thought they had an insane draft. Uh, Brantford here, you got a couple of medium top six guys. Florian Jack guy here, you know, trying to make the Montreal Canadiens just like his brother. And on the Erie Artists here, guys, you got Matthew Schaefer, the lead potential, which is good to see. Should be a top 10 pick this year's draft. Malcolm Spence there, medium top six. Uh, Flint, you got Colson Petra, medium top nine. Guelph here, Luchenko, medium top six, was a first round pick by the Flyers, 13th overall. Kingston has Ludwinski, who's now medium top six, which is good to see. He's been playing, you know, pretty well. It's Kitchen Rangers, you got Salem, Misar, Bruce Wicks, all looking to have good potentials. Dickinson elite potential, Easton Cowan, medium top six there for you Leafs fans. O'Reilly just got taken by the Oilers. Halton in there, of course. Denver Barkey up to medium top six. Oliver Bonk. I mean, obviously, London's always stacked. Rubric here, elite potential. Should be a top five pick in the 2026 draft. You also got Brady Wasslin here, just drafted. Should be a, you know, top pick in the 2027 draft. Now, North Bay, you got Ty Nelson there. Medium top four is good to see. Now, Seneca here in Oshawa, high top six. I know everyone said, like, he was a reach too, but top three pick. Kind of like McTavish, Anaheim gets screwed. I think McTavish is also high top six. I'd probably just make 
Seneca, medium elite. Um, auto 67s there of Ekberg, Pinelli. Muse dropped the potential in medium top six after falling to the third round. Um, Owen Sound, Colby Barlow there, still medium top six. Peterborough has Fitzgerald, Saginaw, Michael Misa, medium elite. Originally, he was supposed to be like the first pick in 2025. Now he's looking like a top five. Perex actually up to elite potential. He was taking ninth overall. I mean, I don't mind that. Maybe a high top four. On Sarnia here, you got Diorio, medium top six. The Soup, no one crazy. Sudbury, of course, Quentin Musty. Elite potential for Quentin Musty. What the heck? 26th overall pick by the Sharks. That's wrong. Should be medium top six. Some of these potentials just don't make sense. Uh, Spitfire is here. Ethan Belichick is taking first overall. Definitely a potential makes sense for him. I think he'll be like a top, you know, five, at least top 10 pick in 2027. Green Tree there as well, medium top six. Should definitely be a sniper though. I mean, I was looking through this team because, you know, obviously the team I watched, me and Thrash have season tickets. A lot of the, you know, potentials, the ratings don't make a ton of sense. Like, I gotta give a shout out to one guy. Cole Davis here, 57. He's definitely better than that. Christofaro, our best defenseman. They got him down at a 60. So uh, the junior, you know, ratings and stuff could be a lot better. And speaking of that, guys, we still have to go through the queue. So I don't think they have as many top prospects like Coria there. Medium top nine. Just going to go through quickly. No offense to anyone, you know, who was a big fan of the queue. I just don't think you guys have as many, uh, you know, high potential players here. Maverick Lamaru, the medium top four does make sense. Jordan Dumais, low elite. I think he should definitely be higher than 73. Uh, at this point, it should be like a mid to high 70. Caleb Denoye there, medium top six. Going to be like, you know, a top pick this year's draft. Matthew Catafor there on Ramuski. Again, I'm just kind of looking through here. Most of these guys are like max medium top nine. So unfortunately for the queue, just, you know, not too much to look at. But I will say Gabriel Dale here, you guys can see 70 overall elite potential. So should be going first round in your 2025 drafts. And speaking of that, guys, you also got Joshua Ravensburg in here. 67 low elite. I think this guy should also have lead potential, as I think he's got similar numbers to Daigle, so I'm not sure why, you know, they're giving that low lead. I'd rather have a real goalie coming out of the draft than, like, all the made-up ones that we always seem to get. Like, it's so easy to get uh, those elite goalies. And now going to the SHL, guys, you got David Edstrom there, Dower Nielsen, both medium top sixes. Dower Nielsen was a third-round pick by the Red Wings, so they think they did really well getting a 72 overall that late. Now, Steen Solberg here, the Norwegian defense by the Ducks, medium top four. And you got a couple more Red Wings here, Sandine Pelica, 74 overall elite potential, so uh, he got a big boost, plus he actually has... Headshot now in the game. First round pick, 2023. Brand Segnigard as well. 73 overall, medium top six. Red Wings just took him. So obviously they're hoping those two guys, you know, playing together will you know, help each other out. And then finally here, you got Lecker and Mackey. 77 overall, medium top six. They got him as a sniper, which is good to see. Uh, Radjevic there, medium top four. Going to be in this year's draft. And now going to the finish league here, guys. You can see Costa Helenus drafted by the Buffalo Sabres. 1873, medium top six. Again, with new headshot. And over in the check league, guys, you got Adam Jarecek here with a headshot as well. 72 medium top four, just drafted first round by the Blues. And finally, the perfect player to end this roster off with his final season, Yehomir Yager, 52 years old now, 69 overall still, playing on that check team that he owns. How cool is that? 52-year-old Yager still getting it done, still in the game. Love to see it. So that's going to do it, guys, for my roster review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.